And we can, you know, switch lanes just a little bit and talk about the community project. This is something that we've been um, talking about kind of, you know, in, in separate channels for a couple weeks now. And I think we have, you know, something that people have kind of agreed upon that I'd like to um, bring, bring Paul into the conversation. If you are still on the call here. Uh, yep, What's I'm up, still man? here. Hey. Excellent. I, I mean, jump in if you want to introduce yourself. I, I know a number of people on this call already know who you are um, because you're you're involved in HIP 72, correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, right. So uh, my name is Paul. I go by Dynacor on Discord. That's right. You might know me from my work uh, with HIP 72, Secure Concentrators. Um, but yeah, today we're, we're going to talk about um, a new project um, that... Uh, Travis actually came to me because uh, I think he heard through the grapevine that I was working on this. And it, it was very much of a, a kind of a, a serendipitous, um, amazing. Like uh, I was thinking one thing because I was having conversations about this cool idea. And it turns out Travis and lots of other people basically all came to the same conclusion that this would be a very cool project. Um, so we got to talking and um, we both agree that this would be a very cool project to do in the open to make it open source firmware and hardware. Um, we could uh, use this kind of as a learning tool. Um, anyone that wants to jump in and contribute or learn, ask questions, um, you, know, you know, maybe we can kind of like uh, take uh, little parts of this project and kind of like dive deep and do. So what's in the box? What's in the box? No, sorry. Um... <laughs> what is it? <laughs> so um, what are we talking about here? Yeah, maybe we should. Uh, do you have the? You know what you could do, Travis, is if you could go to um, the the open source page. It has a picture. So so let's just go there and show everybody what what the heck we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's let's just throw cards out on the table here. Um, show them the show them the three D view too. Oh well, I don't know if I have that pulled up. Shoot. Uh, uh, Alt uh, three. All right. So um, so yeah. So there the idea go. is we should build a um, a secure um, text messaging um, that runs on helium, uh, battery powered. Um, uh, this thing can use uh, an off-the-shelf keyboard from, uh, what is it, the, uh, it's basically, yeah, show, like, show them the, this thing, yeah. So this is, um, this is just an example, and, you know, this is something that, um, you know, separately, you know, I had done using MQTT um, and a board called, manufactured by Solder Party, using a Feather uh, format for this. But you know this will talk over MQTT to the um, to the Helium network. So, um, but using text messaging, which a lot of people think is a very horrible idea to, to do over LoRaWAN, but we're going to do it anyway. So uh, yeah, because it'll be fun. <laughs> yes, right, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, so there's lots of interesting kind of components of of this project. Um, there is RF design. There is uh, battery power management. Um, there is integrating uh, microcontrollers, um, possibly with Arduino. Um, so it's, you know, like whatever kind of component of this project you might be interested in, uh, let me or Travis know, and maybe we, we can kind of like dive deep on one of those, um, those topics. And yeah, so again, like the idea is to develop this in the open, have it open source, uh, eventually make it um, available and hopefully, uh, make it available at like a, a reasonable uh, cost and um, have fun with it, you know? And again, the, the, the firmware is gonna be open source. So like whatever you can do with something that has a keyboard, a small screen, a battery and uh, a connection to the LoRa network using Helium, like we, yep. we can do it. So, so, you know, brainstorm, what your cool application might be and, and you know, let's, let's code it up. 
And if you're not a firmware hacker, that's fine. I mean, if, if you want to do CAD design, if you just want yeah. to herd cats, I mean, and help with the organization of this project, we, we can use you here. You know, uh, you know, this is a community project. We want all hands on deck, you know? Yeah. And so, logo design, uh, if you're good at artwork, you know, like we need a cool logo. Absolutely. So uh, let us know. And, uh, you know, we can start over on the, there's a, a Helium Hacks Happy Hour channel over on the Helium Discord. So uh, it, it's kind of locked down. So you need a 4-H role in order to speak there. Ask any moderator, they'll hook you up with it. And, uh, you know, there's a thread there about community projects and jump in and let us know what you want to do. And let's make this thing happen, folks. Uh, it should be very exciting. So any questions yeah, about Paul, the community is... project? I mean, yeah. I, I should get out of uh, text chat and just say what I'm saying. Like, I, I've been hearing a ton of interest in this. Somebody stopped me just today and was like, hey, you were talking about these, like, messenger things. And uh, so there's, like, some cool Laura type stuff out there or you know these doomsday communicators and things like that um so there's like a ton of awesome reference to then go and apply and like think about this as a lore land solution and so it's so awesome that we could think about building a relatively inexpensive device like sub you know 50 bucks or something depending on the design and then you have a thing that can chat with anyone in the world it's like that's pretty cool I mean, why yeah. buy something when we can build it ourselves for three times the cost, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the way. Um, it's no, the learning but, experience but, that counts. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Uh, th there's a lot to be learned uh, from this. But if we want to talk about mesh-tastic integration, if we want to talk about that, yeah. um, like some type of mesh integration, if we want to talk about attack um, integration, there, there's a lot of um, avenues that we could pursue here. And uh, one thing that I've kind of been wanting to push onto this is using the C Jiao architecture or pinouts because they have um, Nordic, they have, uh, you know, RPI, they have, you know, different architectures that we could use using the same pinout, kind of like how what I just showed a moment ago uses a feather pinout. Uh, this would be using a Jiao. And that's something we're going to have uh, actually seed um, is going to be on this show on the 5th. We had to push just a little bit because they're going to be on an airplane um, on the 29th. So that doesn't quite work out, you know, um, especially with, uh, with the connectivity problems that we have. Um, so they're going to be out on the 5th and uh, be willing to talk to us about uh, the Zhao's as well as the, um, the S2100 uh, data loggers, which are cool, cool, cool uh, LoRaWAN devices. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind, you know, uh, as far as what direction we're going here. But, um, I mean, it, it, everything's fair game. So, um, just jump in and, you know, let your, let your voice be heard. So, Travis, I got a question on that. Okay. Sure. So, uh, is that identifiable? Let me ask, is it identify... Can you identify a specific hotspot and have communication with that specific hotspot? There's no firmware written. That would make an um, absolute, absolute. Hey, there he is. Hey, there he is. Hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, well, welcome boat. back. Uh, you're walking in. We we started talking about community projects while you were gone. Um, oh, cool. yeah. Go on. Keep going, man. Yep. Cool, yep. cool, cool. Yeah. Anthony, go ahead. So I was thinking that would help tremendously in coordination as far as the uh, influx of hotspots that shouldn't be in areas that they should be. That could help us tremendously uh, in communication. Uh, just a side thought, guys, but uh, interesting concept. I love it. So is it communicating? How, how exactly is it communicating in that text board is just sending those little bits of information? That's it back and forth. That is uh, yet to be determined. Um, you know, kind of this is kind of like the rough direction. Um, but uh, yeah, the idea is um, uh, you know, maybe the device per, per, uh, has different channels. And maybe the channels could even be like uh, local, right? So like I'm listening on channel one, and if you're sending within range of, of me, like two kilometers down the street or something like that, on channel one, it shows up and like I can have a chat with you. Or 
maybe it can just use Helium to chat with someone around the world, right? Um, just go route it through the internet and then it pops out. Um, uh, so, you know, the world is our oyster. That's why this is such a cool place to start with this. Um, and uh, kind of rewinding a little bit, I uh, technically, this has the, um, the hardware capable of being a helium mapper. Um, so, you know, like maybe you're texting with this thing in one minute, and then in the background is running like a, a mapper app. And, you know, it's showing you RSSI of the five nearest hotspots or something like that. Like, you know, like I said, world is our oyster. Um, we can uh, we can kind of steer the ship however we want. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, like I said, firmware is not written. Jump in. Let's make this what we want it to be. <laughs> so um, I think it's a very exciting project. That's why it's so great for a community project, I think. So, I agree. you know, if you have an idea, jump in. Let's do it, man. So I, I do, actually. That can help with cheating. Mm -hmm. uh, and the data that's accumulated through simple text messages at locations could validate or invalidate specific things, but it'd have to have rules and regulations because you didn't wouldn't want to devalidate somebody unnecessarily. But... I love it. I'm in with you, Travis, 100%. If you need any help, for sure. That's well, a great idea. We need a idea. ton of help. We, we need all the help. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the whole point of this. Yes, yes, we absolutely need help. That's um, uh, the, whole, the whole scope of this is we need help uh, to make this thing a reality. So, awesome. Uh, where do we get started? You showed some from CAD. Uh, are we ready to start? Fusion 360, you need some enclosures. Where are we at? Uh, yeah, Paul, I, this is something that we were kind of chatting about um, as far as uh, Paul has some designs that are up in, in KiCad. Um, as far as enclosure design, um, it's really something, what do you work in? I mean, do you want to use Fusion 360? Do you want to use OpenCAD? Do you want, I mean, is, is there something that you prefer using? Uh, we're looking, we're looking for hands on deck right now. And so really, um, you know, if, if you're comfortable working in something, we can, we can convert over to whatever we we end up uh, using for, you know, to move forward. So uh, just jump into the mix on to the Helium Hacks Happy Hour channel on Discord, and let's start the conversation. So um, I mean, I'm not going to say if you, if you use Eagle, you can't play ball. Um, that, that's, that's not what we're saying at all here. So um, it, yeah. In my experience with all the mapper stuff, the more CAD files, the better. Everyone's got a different take on something. So there's like things to learn and things to share. Sure. And and that's something that we had kind of talked about earlier about like Flux AI has uh, kind of a collaborative uh, CAD type, um, you know, setup. Uh, but there's still, you know, early beta over there. But uh, going between KiCad and Eagle, that's not going to stop us here. I, I, I think th this is going to be a force that isn't going to be stopped. So just uh, whatever you like working in, bring bring it to the conversation and let's go to town. Yeah. So. Yeah, you could use uh, you could make uh, Gerber's in in paint. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> so, hey, if, if that's the way you like to roll. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I I don't have a lot of answers here. I mean, I, I think there's there's probably a lot of questions and I, I'm looking for other people to to jump in and just say, hey, this is what I want to see this project be able to, you know, uh, accomplish. And so let's let's aim for that. So even if you don't know or you don't have the skill set or you don't want to learn the skill set, you know, to make it do something, throw your ideas in. Someone out here, uh, you know, in, in the group will be able to say, hey, yeah, I like that. You know, let's jump on that. Let's make that happen. So um it doesn't just have to be what you can contribute. It could be what you want to see this project end up being. And uh, that that's very valuable as well um, to the community working on this. So that's uh, that's the community project, I guess. I, I hope everyone is excited as I am about this. I mean, um, I, I, I think it's a cool community project. I think it's something that um, everyone to some degree will be able to find some aspect to engage in. So, um, you know, let's, let's go ahead and let's go through this process. Let's, let's start iterating ideas and uh, see what we end up with, get design documents together, and let's, let, let's go to work. 
with that, um, uh, any questions on this or, or, or any comments? Um, thank you everyone no for uh, for attending. No um, and uh, you know, I, like I say, we're trying to hold this to an hour. So um, next week, you know, let's get back together on this. Uh, next week uh, was going to be seed, but we had to push that once. And so, if anyone has something to present, hit me up. Uh, I think we have an open slot next week. And until then, um, same bad time, same bad channel. Be safe, folks. Adios.